Brazil's president has tested positive for COVID-19. Member of Parliament for the U.S. Party queries Minister of VSA on the distribution of unemployment benefits. But first up, Minister of Penitentiary were critical of the speed that The Hague is demanding in the execution of reform measures. Those are the headlines for Tuesday, July the 7th, 2020. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast, so let's get started. In our first story, and in news out of the Netherlands, the government of Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin on Friday again sought attention for the challenges that they are facing during the coronavirus crisis. The three countries' uh, ministers of plenipotentiary were critical of the speed that The Hague is demanding in the execution of reform measures. Ministers plenipotentiary Anthony Bechina of Curaçao, Hilfred Bessaril of Aruba, and René Violinus of St. Martin expressed frustration after Friday's Kingdom of Council ministers' meeting. The planned decision-making with regard to the third liquidity support tranche for the countries have been postponed until Friday, July the 10th. The Dutch conditions for the financial loans that the countries are requesting are too strict and not tailored to the specific in, uh, situation of each country. The plenipotentiary ministers told the media after Friday's Kingdom Council ministers meeting, if someone is having trouble holding up one's pants, you can pull them down or help that person hold them up. I have never heard of a generic condition to cut salaries by 12.5%. That cannot be done in the Netherlands, but it is expected of three small islands, said Burkina of Curaçao. Every time the Netherlands comes with a generic solution, there is no consideration for the differences between the countries, said Bessaril of Aruba, who indicated that since Aruba became a country in 1986, it has never asked for liquidity support. Meanwhile, the Minister Penipotentiary for St. Martin, René uh, Violinus, spoke to our Prime Minister, the Honorable Sylvia Jacobs, on the program Talk with the Prime Minister on Monday, July the 6th, 2020. All the group of young people um, that I met with recently, when they asked about um, something similar in terms of how the meeting went, um, the stuff that happens in the Kingdom Council of Ministers is considered stats game, which is a secret, a national secret. Um, so divulging all of the details uh, is not something that um, you can readily do. Um, however, in terms of my sentiment and what uh, I felt um, happened in the meeting was that um, the conditions were laid out, the deliberation that we thought we were about to have uh, started. So we presented our points, uh, what is called a spray text, um, <laughs> presented our points to um, to the council and the uh, state secretary in particular. And we explained that issuing generic conditions for all three islands is not a good idea. It is not feasible. All of our uh, living uh, circumstances are different. We have unions that we have to consult uh, prior to just implementing uh, broad sweeping changes all across the board. Um, it, came, it came up in Curaçao's um, uh, uh, it came up in Curaçao's uh, deliberation points as well that uh, you cannot issue generic conditions for all of us. Uh, what we realized is that some of the norms that are all wanted to apply, uh, they just took them and applied them all across the board. We argued that uh, a 12 percent in uh, Curaçao or in St. Martin might equate to a 25 percent in Curaçao. So you cannot just uh, generically paint everybody with the same brush um, that all of the circumstances need to be uh, taken into consideration. And uh, it seemed as if our pleas just were falling on deaf ears. Uh, we asked repeatedly to go into separate discussions with uh, the Ministry of Bayes at CAP. Um, and uh, again, that never materialized. Um, what ended up happening is that after 
the countries uh, presented their position. Then Minister, uh, State Secretary Knops uh, had his uh, opportunity to rebut what we had to say. Uh, and then um, in our uh, second round that we were expecting to have to answer him back, um, the uh, Minister President, uh, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, uh, in the person of Mr. Rutte, um, basically uh, decided to take the meeting in a direction where he sided with Minister Knops. Uh, I keep saying minister because I think at the time he was minister before he went back to being the state secretary. Um, and so he sided with uh, Knops uh, on uh, the fact that um, the proposition or the, the Vorstel that is on the table before us, um, he considers it a, a good proposition. Um, and we have either to accept it or to um, or to deny it. Um, that the um, past 10 years, um, we have been messing up our autonomy and um, Holland is under no obligation to give us any money. Um, and so it's either we take it or we leave it. Um, and uh, when he asked what say you to the proposition, um, my answer uh, was that I will take it back to the government of St. Martin, and um, uh, then the uh, Aruba uh, Hefwin uh, indicated that in principle, uh, Aruba has already submitted um, their version of uh, their uh, reforms. And so in principle, they don't have an objection, but he will still consult with his government. Then uh, the Curacao uh, Hefwin uh, tried to uh, give a rebuttal and um, to indicate that uh, he would take it back to his government as well, and he was cut off uh, mid-sentence. And um, that's when we had uh, either you make the decision um, by Wednesday, 5 o'clock, or we withdraw the uh, proposal from um, off the table. We pulled the proposal off the table. And so um, that brought us to the point that we are um, deliberating and in consultation with our governments and then uh, the rest as we know uh, is history so the um, third tranche of uh, the liquidity support that is supposed to be a um, uh, an entity that will decide on uh, any future uh, liquidity support and uh, that's what's going to be coming up next friday meanwhile the prime minister says that she also reiterated and asked why there was a need for the entities, seeing that we already had an entity with good checks and balances. But first, the Minister Penipotentiary had this to say. Still waiting on the paperwork. Um, we were promised the documentation last week, Monday, because the RMR that actually was going to deal with the entity was supposed to be today. Right. Um, we, on, uh, I believe on Wednesday, um, while we were having our deliberations as the uh, three ministers, plenty potentiary, our cabinets were deliberating with each other. Um, everybody was like, uh, did you guys get any documents? Did you guys get any documents? And everybody was like, no, we still haven't received anything yet. And then um, miraculously, <laughs> right as we were talking about it, um, an email came in from um, the secretariat of um, uh, the uh, Interior Affairs Ministry um, and in that email, it indicated that there would be an extra RMR on the third, on the tenth, sorry, of July. Um, what the content of the meeting would be was only speculation, because since we okay. didn't deal with the entity and we haven't received any documents, any underlying documents as to how how the entity would be composed, what it entails, how far-reaching it will be, um, we have no idea of what. Uh, exactly the entity is going to be responsible for. And so um, via via, you know, um, you hear that, oh, it's uh, going to be a, a ZBO uh, that's um, uh, independent uh, organization, uh, an organization that is uh, separate from government but carries out government tasks. And um, it's fall, a ZBO falls under the responsibility of a minister. And so we are supposing that the minister that this ZBO is going to fall under dealing with the islands of the kingdom would be a basic cap. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
of course, at its helm or directing it probably will be somebody from Basic Cap. So we are seeing the Dutch circular economy um, at work here, where uh, an entity is going to be set up to probably manage and take over tasks and responsibilities. Um, we don't know how far reaching that is. It's all speculatory, as I'm saying. But again, if you do not have documentation and you see what goes on in the best islands uh, with the RCN, you can only speculate that it'll be something similar in nature. He did mention that they were not ready with a document for the 3rd of July and that we would receive it similar to what you told us on Monday. I also reiterated to the state secretary that I still find that having less than a week to deliberate something that would have such far reaching consequences for the country and also seeing how long it took it's taking them to put it together is a travesty on our autonomy. Um, in our discussion on the 25th, he mentioned consensus um, laws, which require all islands and countries to be in agreement before they can be executed. So for me, it is a non-discussion. In my letter prior to that, um, I had also asked why there was a need for the entity, seeing that we already had an entity handing out or delivering our SSRP with good checks and balances from the SOA Bay as well as an independent um, organization and the unemployment via the SMDF, St. Martin Development Fund, which also has a good relationship with Bezetka in executing projects and being held accountable for every final penny that has been spent. So. Um, anything balancing from that would come directly to the coffers of government, which is, has been customary since IRMA, and it is for liquidity for the island to be able to run, to be able to pay its subsidies, for it to be able to assist um, pensioners, to be able to assist uh, persons out of work, to be able to pay the salaries of the civil servants. And we, I want to reiterate one more thing. We only have a few more minutes, but literally right now, the Dutch are disputing that they asked us to cut salaries. Our finance minister actually got all kinds of backlash from CFT for not cutting salaries. Just for your information, people of St. Martin, we were one of the only countries that applied what they asked was the personnel forwarding. So the whole package that comes with it. And we attempted to do that so that we don't cut and hurt on the salaries of the people whose mortgages and everything else, rent is connected to it. Um, we did still up to do a 50% of the vacation pay, which we are still getting the backlash for. And um, we are also looking into the responses received from the unions as to the legality of these conditions being placed on us and furthering our argument to the highest possible level because we cannot continue to be trampled on this way. And in other news at this time, the St. Martin Christian Party, SMCP, has announced the resignation of member and candidate Mr. Michael Orlando Somersall, who, in keeping with the Articles of Association of SMCP, submitted his resignation in writing on Thursday, the 25th of June, 2020. Michael Somersall has been a member of the St. Martin Christian Party since the 28th of July, 2016, and contested elections as such in September of 2016, February of 2018, and January of this year, 2020. With his appointments to the position of Deputy Minister Plenipotentiary in 2018, Michael Somersault sacrificed his business and relocated his family to take up residency in the Netherlands, where he proudly served the people of St. Martin from the 25th of June, 2019. During his tenure as Deputy Minister Plenipotentiary, he worked diligently to regain the respect of the Dutch and other countries for St. Martin's representatives in the Netherlands. Michael Somersault relinquished his position on the 19th of November 2019 due to the change of government, the release reads in part. And still to come, Member of Parliament for the National Alliance says that the Dutch have the island's emotions running high. We'll have the details to that story and much more than SSM Daily News. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. 
Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. And in other news for you at this time, Member of Parliament for the National Alliance, the Honorable George Pontifex, says that the Dutch proposal that the conditions that the Dutch has placed on the islands have the island's emotions running high. He said that the way the Prime Minister Mark Rutte said that the conditions that are being placed on us are the same that was put on France and Italy, it is not true. He tells us more. Of what is happening bet between ourselves as islands, Herbert Croissant, St. Martin, and the Dutch government. The conditions they have placed on us, as you can see what took place in Curacao, where they had, I want to term it, riots, burning down of things, overturning of cars and so on. Thank God there were no physical harm done to anyone, which is good, but at the same time, um, the emotions run high. If you can't put food on your table, you have a so called, and that's why I tell people plain, I do not consider Holland the mother country because no mother, no matter what, no matter how her child behaves or whatever, will treat her child in this manner. So I don't consider her the mother country. However, what is being said by the Prime Minister Mark Rutte when he said that the conditions being placed on us are the same as the put on Italy, Spain, and France, it is not true. The Prime Minister, and I don't have the document in front of me right now, but the Prime Minister himself said, said during a, a, a briefing or whatever, he said that they have a basket of goodies and it's not necessarily a loan but a gift and they can give a gift to Italy and, and Spain. So therefore, do not come and tell people of St. Martin or Robert Carlson of St. Martin that you are putting the same conditions that you're on, 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 on us as you're doing in those countries. It is not true. What you should do, and this has been done, somebody mentioned the master plan. Do you know, people of St. Martin, that Germany, Germany that created more than one World War, World War I, World War II, were given what you call debt cancellation of the 60%. Germany, a country that caused the lives of millions of people, civilians and soldiers based on the two wars, was given a 60% or more debt cancellation. Right now, as we speak, we owe the Netherlands almost one billion guilders in debt. Why can't they give us a, 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 a debt cancellation? And I think somebody said it, said it before, if not, I repeat it. There was a time when the Netherlands was in trouble, a particular city in Holland, after I think the flood, they said Curacao, but I think the Netherlands and Tillys took some funds and sent it to assist them. We didn't ask for it to be repaid. During World War II and World War I, the Allied soldiers, the Allied soldiers, Germany, France, the UK, and Canada got together and they were supported by the refineries of Ruben Curacao with the oil. Up to 90% of the oil came from these islands. What did you get for it? Nothing. So today now, we are in trouble. You're saying, know what we did in the past. So if we go back in the past now, who owes who? So please, do not look to try to punish a few politicians that the city punishing almost 300,000 people. I think that's unjust and it's unfair. And for those who are saying to the Dutch government, yes, come in, take over the islands, take control, I think you don't know your history. They were the last to abolish slavery, number one. And secondly, to date, as we speak in South Africa, 1,500 pilots, out of the 1,500 pilots, 150 are Indian or black. The rest are white South Africans. And a country where the majority is black. 80% of the revenues are, oh, the, the economy is owned by the white South Africans. This is today. So how do you think, or what do you, you expect to come and treat us differently? And the issue of the prison, if they want to take over the prison, fine, but you have to pay for it. You want us with no liquidity funds. Going through COVID-19, you want us to do what? 
to rebuild the prison, to, man, to, to pay for you to manage the prison, with what funds? With what funds? You know, I really hope that international um, communities get to see and, and hear what's going on because the fact is, the Dutch pretend very well. They talk very nice in public, but behind your back, that's when they use a knife to cut you down. People of St. Martin, do not allow yourself to be divided. We fall into the same trap again of allowing ourselves to be divided. Mentally, we have to understand it's a game. It's a mental game. It's a mind game. Put us to fight against each other. And while we are fighting, they are planning putting things in place. And in other news, on Monday, July the 6th, 2020, Member of Parliament, Mr. Cla uh, Claudius Van Camper, forwarded a letter to the Minister of ASR, Richard Paneflet, regarding the distribution of the unemployment benefits. In his letter to the Minister, the MP quoted a complaint that he received and which he decided to forward it to the Minister in order to get the correct response. The Member of Parliament spoke to our news department. Yesterday made use of my right to request que um, some answers to questions I posed to the Minister of FESA, the Honourable Minister Richard Panafleck, um, because um, the unemployment benefits don't seem to work according to many people. Many people have contacted me where they applied for it, but they got a food box instead. Now, food boxes don't pay bills like, you know, GB, uh, water, and electricity. So, and when they send an email to complain, seemingly nobody's answering. Now, I am not going to make an accusation that it is so, because I don't know that, and that's why I wanted to make use of my right to ask clarification questions to the minister, which I did yesterday, and the questions went as follows. How many persons have applied, and how many have been denied or granted a food box instead of financial assistance to cover their financial needs? So, you know, there are two types of unemployment uh, benefits. One, that is through COVID-19, which is done by the St. Martin Development Foundation. They are handling that one. And then there's the direct unemployment benefit that goes through the labor office or the social welfare office, but to the minister of VSA for sure. So that's why the questions went to him, because we are talking about that aspect, not the one of the St. Martin um, that is being handled through COVID. The other one is, if any, are any arrangements being made for persons requesting it when it comes to water and electricity. Now, I have stated it before and I'll state it again for the record. I believe that sometimes you can give direct financial aid by paying the water and electricity bill of person. It works two ways. One, people don't grow a huge deficit three, four months from now, owing GB water and light and then being cut off like what um, happened started happening because GB said, look, we never said we are not going to cut. We said we are going to postpone for a period of time and we are going to fix the um, electricity, uh, the fuel clause for six months. Not that we are not going to cut for six months because they can't hold it financially. So maybe government could use money to pay those that have requested it to pay water and electricity while some of them can still get um, food vouchers from the Red Cross, because I know the Red Cross is still over there giving food vouchers, so there might be a way of them interacting, getting um, on one hand a few hundred guilders, I think it's 600 guilders that are given vouchers for food, and on the other hand, government helps them also paying the water and electricity, and you take an average of six months to see how they were spending, otherwise people will start selling electricity, selling water, something you want to prevent. So you take an average, um, that average is, is, is paid for, if consumption suddenly goes up, that's the consumer's uh, responsibility, because that means you're abusing the situation. Again, another question I asked was, how often does a recipient receive a food box, and for how long does such a food box go? So, I mean, how much product is in there? Is it for a week? Is it for a month? Uh, for how many people is it? Um, what happens to uh, mothers and children? Are there specialty needs for people that, are, um, that you know, they can't use certain milks? So, you know, we have different things. So I just need a little clarity to understand what's really happening when you give that food box. And as we continue now with more news in this edition of SSM Daily News for this evening, the government of St. Martin has regulated the prices of petroleum products by imposing a maximum price at which wholesalers and retailers can sell these products on St. Martin. 
Due to the ongoing developments internationally, the prices of crude oil have experienced adjustments upward from ULG and gas oil, which is diesel. The general public is hereby informed that as of today, Tuesday, July the 7th, 2020, at 6 a.m. this morning, the maximum consumer price of ULG and gas oil has increased and has been amended as follows. For ULG, the current price was 1.580. The new price is now 1.685. For gas oil, diesel, the current price was 1.102, and the new price now stands at 1.195. Now, turning to our weather forecast for today, the 7th of July, 2020. Moisture and instability associated with the tropical wave will account for increasing cloudiness and isolated showers across the local area. Additionally, Saharan dust will be present in varying concentrations for the next several days. Persons with allergies and or respiratory illnesses should continue taking the necessary precautions. A small craft advisory is in effect for St. Martin until Thursday morning. Small craft operators and sea bathers should continue to exercise caution. So the outlook through Thursday midday, partly cloudy and breezy with light haze and isolated showers. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Brawl breaks out in the parking lot of Bobby's Marina on Sunday. We'll have the details to that story and more when SSM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. code or fingerprint download with mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time for more information visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login and in more news for you at this time after an otherwise successful event on Sunday's Daycation Cooler Cruise, which was organized and was hosted by Village Life and Small Island Soca Cruise, with entertainment which was provided by DJ Vibes, DJ Main Event, DJ C. Rue, DJ Mills, and Official Band. The event was marred by a brawl that broke out at Bobby's Marina parking lot in Phillipsburg. The brawl involved a large group of mostly young men. Videos of the incident circulated widely on social media on Sunday afternoon. The video depicted several bloodied and battered young men fighting in the parking lot with other swimwear clad patrons scattering to avoid the melee or to restrain friends and loved ones. The fight was allegedly started by two men after the cruise ended around 4 p.m., after which their friends and associates joined the fray. The motive for the fight could not be definitely ascertained according to today's Daily Herald. Police spokesman Inspector Josefa told our news department that they knew of the incident, but no one wanted to file an official complaint. And with that, viewers, brings us to the end of this edition of SXM News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, and just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.